Alrighty people, hello, I am Kurt, you are the audience, but you already knew that. And in front of you, you can see an image that I put up last week as part of my retro gaming designs. Um, in case you're not following me on Instagram, this is where I post all of these things, along with on my Facebook and Twitter, so go check me out there. And then let's jump into how I actually made this. Alrighty, so as you can see, as with all good designs I make, it starts off with references and colour guides. I make the colour guides so that later on I don't have to eyedropper the individual images to get the colour that I want. Though I do end up doing that quite a bit anyway. But it is handy to have this colour scheme onto the side so there's a constant colour and a big place where you can click with the eyedropper tool to get that said colour. And to start off with I like to go with the main big bulky part of the image and this one was the body of Banjo. And I couldn't find a good image from Banjo on the side, so I ended up using Donkey Kong as you saw, and then just adapting it so it was a little bit more of the bear shape that Banjo is. Um, I didn't have an image that was a good reference for the backpack, so I ended up finding another one for that. Um, and you'll see that I never have a set design. Originally I had the bag closed, but then I thought, wait, I need it open so that Kazooie can be sticking her head out. Um, and you'll see here me playing with the different buckle sizes and how the shadows work and the different colour schemes that we'll be working with it. Um, the backpack lid opening is probably my least favourite part of this design if I ever decide to go back to it. That's the first thing that I would be changing but that's with all designs. You will find that there will be parts that you hate, there will be parts that you like but you have to just realise, okay cool, this is where my skill was at at the moment. I couldn't be spending any more time on that otherwise I wouldn't get it done and that is something that I've found key along with having breaks like I am right here if you do not take breaks within it you will burn out and it's just no fun um, but when designing it all comes up to personal taste as you'll see here I've just put a little detail in that necklace that would never be seen but I put it there because I liked it and then you'll find that you just make bad designs at this point it looks like I'm making a weird platypus beast. It looks nothing like Banjo and I just didn't like it. And because this is just a fun little project that I'm doing for my, by myself, I kind of literally just went and st like took the main image and traced over it because yes, it is technically not my design but if I adapt it into my look and it looks alright, then I don't see what's so bad about that. I'm not making any money off this. This is literally a fan art piece to the people that made these original designs. But overall, it did end up turning out much different to the original design, so I feel it's okay to take certain parts. Um, you'll see here that even though I did take an original design, I still had to adapt it um, kind of like to the actual image I'm working on. And you'll see he me here doing the same thing with the Donkey Kong arm and the body before, things do get adapted, so it's not 100% taking what is there. But it is, at the same time, trying to figure out what parts of the original designs would work with mine and which parts don't. And you'll see here, I just literally took the banjo eyes and now I'm adapting it so that it's a little bit, like, better for Kazooie's. And again, another one of those breaks. You do need to take breaks. If I didn't have those, this design would have looked a hell of a lot worse. Um, this beak actually was quite interesting. I wasn't sure if I wanted to have it as a solid colour or um, more of a detailed piece. Um, you'll see later on that I do add the shading to it, but at this point in time it looks quite flat. And you'll see in your work that there are parts that you look at them right now and they'll be going, oh, that's not good. Why am I doing it like that? Um, but at the end, when you add these slight details, then you'll find that, oh wow, that's a hell of a lot better than I thought it was. So, as you can see now, I'm starting to work on the shadows. Um, the shadows I'm designing right here, you'll see that they just don't work, so I delete them. Um, don't be afraid to go back a few pieces and figure out, okay, that didn't work, so what's a better way that I can do this? Um, up until the very end, I'm still playing with the opacity of those shadows to see if I want them as hard shadows, if I want them as softer shadows. And eventually I figure out a way that looks alright to me. Um, but it is finding those details that make these pieces look amazing in comparison to, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. 
I'm not saying that I'm an amazing artist at all, but adding small details made this piece a hell of a lot better than it originally was. Like the smallest detail of putting these shadows here on the wings so that it actually looks like separate feathers is something that added so much to it. Um, what I did find was when I was working with the shadows, there was an issue when I turned the opacity down that it actually desaturated parts of the image. Um, it turns out that, that was because the original image wasn't actually um, using the correct colour of black. It was using a very dark grey that, to the visible eye, you couldn't really pick out. But when you actually went to the colour um, wheel, you saw, oh, that's okay, that's not the colour I wanted. And just like you do shadows, make sure you're also doing highlights. It adds quite a bit. So on top of the um, Kazooie's head, Banjo's head. And I also like to add a little bit of text to some images just to get a little bit of the character because Banjo, as soon as I hear that, I think, yo yeah? And that was originally what I thought. Um, and now I'm working on the background. I started working on a tree and actually put in a hexagon. I'm like, wait, he uses those. So I ended up creating this honeycomb sort of background that I really liked and then ended up with the final color. So you see here, I'm playing with those shadows again. Um, a second ago, I figured out that there was no actual shadow color that worked, so that's when I went back to the original dark black and then desaturated it, and then this was the final image. Um, overall, I was very happy with this design. It started off looking absolutely terrible. I'm like, oh, I don't know why I'm doing this and why I'm recording this one of all things. I could be doing so much better. And then at the end, I was really proud of what I did, and it's just proof that if you stick with something and put in the work, then eventually it will get good, and I only hope to improve and get better. So, do tell me what you think. Do you guys like this sort of speedrun voiceover part, or would you rather me actually be talking throughout the full process of, okay, this is my mindset, this is my mindset, or do you just not want any of these tutorials at all? If you do though, what sort of tutorials do you want? Because I'm not locked down to my designs, I'm not locked down to any sort of focus. I could be doing my animations, I could be doing cosplay, it doesn't matter. It's all something that I just want to do. I want to help show you guys how I think and hopefully help you guys move forward in your skill set as well. So, as always, I've been Kurt, you've been the audience, thanks for watching, and now, go make something!